Stephen Fry is a teacher here in Washington and is active in the D.C. Democratic Party. I uh, guess. Uh, your campaign promises to focus on crime prevention and educational equity, two things that I feel are inextricably linked. How will you negotiate across the aisle to ensure that not just the school, but the community has the proper support to sustain and prosper <clears throat> no matter their social economic status? We are the only country that bases so much of our educational funding on property taxes, which is absolutely ridiculous. That means that if a child wins a birth lottery and they go to a school, their parents were, are financially privileged, then they are liable to get a very good public education in America. But it shouldn't be that if you, if you do not have financially advantaged parents, that you do not. Every school in the United States should be a palace of learning. Every school. We have millions of American children who go to school every day in schools that do not even have the adequate school supplies with which to teach an eight-year-old to read. If an eight-year-old cannot read, by, by the age of eight, if they can't read, the chances of high school graduation are drastically diminished and the chances of incarceration is drastically increased. We have millions of American children living in this chronic trauma, living in America's domestic war zones, where the PTSD of a, of a, a returning veteran from Afghanistan or Iraq, psychologists tell us, is no more severe than the PTSD of these children. We should rescue these children no differently than we would rescue them from a natural disaster. And that's why when I'm president, we will have a massive realignment of resources in the direction of children 10 years old and younger. We need a United States cabinet level department of children and youth. If you want to see the economic potential of this country, if you want to see the economic vibrancy of this country, if you want to see the entrepreneurial spirit of this country, you go to any kindergarten in any neighborhood in this country. And these children are full-on citizens of the United States. And I will be their president. One final question from Duvalier Malone. He's an author and community activist right here in Washington. Duvalier? Thank you. In today's hostile political environment, can a presidential bid be supported by love? If so, do you think love can win the White House? Well, first of all, I think it's the only thing that can win the White House. I think far more people in this country love than hate. Far more. And that's true in this world. The problem we have today is that those who hate, hate with conviction. And conviction is a force multiplier. Those who hate today, those who fear, they are effective, they are organized, and they are convicted. Those of us who love now need to become convicted and organized and strategized. We need to do more than small random acts of kindness. We need huge strategized acts of doing the right thing. Look at terrorism. We know that what hate, how powerful it is when it is turned into a political force, but it's nothing compared to how powerful love is when it's turned into a political force. That's what I'm trying to do with my campaign. That's the message I'm giving. What we need to do is the right thing. We need to rescue these children. We need to pay reparations. We need to wage peace. We need to purify the heart of a nation, just like we need to purify our own hearts. And then when we do that, when we're honest about the darkness we need to deal with, we will get to such incredible light. And we will have a new birth of freedom, as Abraham Lincoln said. There is nothing compared to what this country is going to do when we release the truth of who we are. So you're talking about love. That's obviously your, yep. your calling card and, and, and the, 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 the force behind your books. How do you do that in a debate with Donald Trump? Well, first of all, <clears throat> let's not pretend that he would debate me, Donna. He would insult me. He would bait me, but he would not debate me. So on the stage so, with Donald Trump. I, you know, what do you do with a child? How do you treat a psychic? <laughs> I would not go in uh, expecting a reasonable conversation. I would be open to a reasonable conversation. I would not go in expecting one. My conversation is with the American people. I think we're so exhausted. I don't think the American people need me to tell them who Donald Trump is or what Donald Trump is. I want to tell the American people what America could be and what it will be if they elect me president. Erin Williamson, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.